we did. Uh, do we want to start off? Do we have anybody uh, that we want to put on our, our prayer list or, or a praise report? Any, anybody got anything? Yes, ma'am. Amen. 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 We mentioned it before. There's a, a, a guy that we know. He's a big uh, gospel singer named Ricky Atkinson. And he's got a song that says, there's another doctor in the room. And I just can't, I get choked up when I think about that. That's, uh, but there he is. And like I say, the, the doctors and nurses, I'm glad we got them. I thank the Lord for them, but they don't get to make the final call. On that kind of stuff. That's, that's great. Does anybody else have anything? Uh, next Sunday, we're not, uh, me and Wendy aren't going to be here. We're going to, her sister's getting baptized. So we're going to go and uh, support her in her getting <laughs> baptized. But uh, uh, Brother David's going to bring the, the Sunday school lesson next, next Sunday. So y'all keep him in, in, your, in your prayers. Uh, I do my... A uh, daughter-in-law sent us a message. She had a cousin that was uh, in a bad motorcycle wreck. And uh, so y'all keep them. I don't know a name, but I know the good Lord, what, yeah. Cliff. But uh, I know the good Lord knows all about it. So y'all keep him in your prayers. Uh, trying to think of anything else. Oh, I got to come in here Wednesday night and talk to a bunch of middle schoolers. So y'all pray for me. Uh, that ought to be fun. Uh <laughs> But no, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, y'all. I'm looking forward to it, but I'll still take a few extra prayers uh, if I can get them. And uh, I didn't want to didn't want to fail to mention. I think we had an anniversary recently for y'all too. So happy anniversary to y'all. Thank you, Lord, for bringing y'all two together. Amen. But let's, uh, if y'all will, let's. Uh, Let's start off in prayer, if y'all please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for, for giving us a place to come this morning, to come together, to, to worship you and to read your word. And uh, But more importantly, we want to thank you for a desire in our heart to get up and, and come to Sunday school, come to church. Lord, I'd like to ask you to be with all the classes this morning, all the teachers, and just put a special blessing on the reading of your word. Please be with the pastor here just a little bit as he brings your message to us. Lord, open up our hearts and our minds and just help us just to soak it all in and uh, apply it to our life. Lord, we want to thank you for all our blessings that you've given us. Lord, just help us to always be mindful and appreciative of everything that you've done for us. Lord, even when, when things ain't looking good, help us to be, to be appreciative for, for our blessings. We ask all of that in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Again, good morning to everybody. Uh, have you ever kind of found yourself in one of them situations where everything seemed to be going really great for everybody except for you? And, uh, and I don't mean this in a, a, a jealous way or anything like that, but it just seems like everybody around you is kind of cruising down this brand new blacktop and and you kind of busy you kind of busy clacking your teeth together on a dirt road your life uh again happy for those that things seem to be going smooth for but you kind of you kind of wish god had grade your road down a little bit and uh take some of them bumps and then washboards out and smooth things out uh i kind of suspect that We've all been that way at, at some time. You know, it's, 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 it's hard not to be. And, and I'm not talking about being whiny or being poochy lit or anything. But I'm just talking about just a low spot in your life. And we, and we all go through them. But when we get to them spots, uh, what do what we do as, as Christians? What, what, do we, what do we do? Uh, what should we do? as Christians. I know it's probably different than what we used to do, but where do we turn 
when we get in them low spots as Christians. And I do know, as well as anybody, it's real easy to sit in here and say, oh, I turn to God, first thing I ever do, I run straight to the Lord, I go to prayer. But do you really, I mean, really, do, no. We do, so, we try to fix it ourselves. We try to fix it ourselves. Or we wait and get our wife to tell us how we're supposed to fix it. One or the other. Uh, only the guys are laughing at that one. <laughs> but we try other things. We try to fix things ourselves. Maybe we turn to, you know, at times in our life, we've turned to drugs or alcohol. Or, and it, it, it ain't even got to be that sinister of anything. I mean, it could be food. It could be TV. This is what I'm going to comfort myself with during this, this low spot. I'm going to go get my, my counseling from, from Dr. Phil and, and little Debbie. Make me feel all better. Uh, and, but maybe something like, maybe it's on the surface, it's something good like your, your, your church family or your friends is, is where, where we turn. And, and that's good. I mean, it's good to go to godly people when you, when you have an issues like that. But I pray that the first thing that they ask you is, have you prayed about this? I, I went to a, a wedding one time. A buddy of mine was marrying his son and his fiancée. And it was really cool. He wanted to talk to them before their wedding. So we all kind of got together, and, and he told them. He said, look, y'all, y'all, you know, they're young, getting married. He said, I will help you in any way that I can in your marriage. He said, I've been married a long time. I've done it right. I've done it wrong. He said, I'll help you with anything. But don't you dare come to me first. Don't you ever come to me first with an issue in your marriage. You talk to God about it first. I'll be there, but you need to go to God first. Because I've done it, I've, I've done it wrong and I've done it right. That means I, 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 don't, I ain't got all the answers. God's got the answers. And that just stuck with me. That, that he told his own children that. Don't you dare come to me first. Because when he first said it, I was like... I ain't do. But then he said, you go to God first. He said, I'll help you, but you need to turn to God. And that's the way we all need to, 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 to go through this life when things kind of get sideways. And if things ain't going sideways at some point in your life, you either real fortunate or you ain't paying attention or you don't care. Something. I don't know. These lives ain't Ain't always that smooth blacktop that we talk about. Uh, we want godly advice. Where's the best place to get godly advice? It's from God. It's from God. In John 14, it tells us that he's going to send us a comforter, the Holy Spirit. So why are we wasting time on all this other stuff? What are we waiting for? Why are we not talking to God about these things? Why are we going to all these other places and all these other things and, and, and other people instead of turning to God? Our first scripture today is in Psalms 46, 1 and 2. Psalms 46, 1 and 2 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed and through the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea? He says that he is our, our refuge. Refuge is a safe place. You know, you talk about, you know, running for help and all this. We need to go to a refuge, our safe place. The place where, where all, this, all this bumpiness kind of smooths out. And we can breathe a little bit. 
and, and we can kind of calm down for a bit. Just a, a page or so over in Psalms 55 and 22. It says, cast thy burdens upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. When it says move, it's like slipping and, and falling. Uh, he will sustain, sustain us and never be moved. He's talking about being moved in our faith. If our faith is in God, he, he's going to help us hold on and strengthen that faith. So he will sustain us and he'll never let us let the righteous suffer or be, be moved. And I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that Dr. Phil and little Debbie ain't never offered that to us. A lot of folks today, I mean, it's the drug problems running around. Got a lot of drugs running around today. They're not made to solve a problem. They're made, to, they're, they're made to make you forget about it for a little while. But it's still there. Turn into all these other different things in our life. They're just to make you forget about the problem for a minute. But your problem's still there. Only God himself is going to bring you through that problem. And in God's scripture, he says, give it to me. Give me your problem. Hand it here. I got it. We hear a lot about, leave it at the cross. Well, the problem is we turn around and we used to call it Indian giving. When you give somebody something and you take it back, that's what we do. Oh, I'm going to leave it at the cross. Hey, everybody, I took my problem, left it at the foot of the cross. Let Jesus handle it. And in the morning, you right back over there, picking it up, worrying about it, complaining about it, trying to fix it yourself. You didn't leave it. You just laid it down for a minute. You just let him borrow it for a minute. And he turned right back around and went and picked it up. When he says, give it to me, he says, give it to me. Let me I'll handle it. I'll handle it. It's been a while back. I was, uh, I was at our old church, and I walked out the door. And I saw this little baby bird, and I mean little bitty little baby bird, sitting on the steps. I mean, this joker's like this. And, uh, and I walked out, and he, and he flew off, but you could tell he wasn't real good at this. He just had started flying, because he was having some issues kind of flying around the side of the church. I could tell he was having some trouble, so... I walked around the corner, and there he was. He was out in the yard, out in the grass, and uh, he was just sitting there. And I walked up and kind of looked at him, and he's sitting there with his mouth all wide open, you know, trying to scare me off with everything he had. And I recognized this little bird. The, the little office door had one of those awnings over it, and the birds had built a nest in there. And there was three little chicks. There was three little eggs for a while, and it was cool. I got to watch them. As they, you know, they hatched and everything grew up and went from being fuzzy to having feathers and all that. So I knew he was one of, one of these little things. And he was trying to fly, but he was having a really hard time. And uh, I kind of just let him chill out there for a little bit. And I came out of the fellowship hall, and he's, he's still there. And, I mean, it's hot. It's, it's like 90-something degrees. It is really, really hot that day. So course I told him hey dude you know you need to go fly off somewhere I was trying not to mess with him but you need to fly somewhere a little cooler so he did he took off flying went around the corner slammed into the wall fell down on some hot bricks on the porch and everything and I refer to him as a him because I named him Scott because it reminded me very much of of me uh because kind of like me, he's trying to fix his own situation by himself. And he went from one bad spot to an even worse spot. It was bad enough out there in the grass. But then he went around and jumped down on them hot bricks on the porch. And it sounded really like something I'd do. I tried to fix it. And all I did is end up in a worse spot than I was to start with. And 
all of this happened because this little bird, he wasn't able and he wasn't prepared to get himself out of this bad spot he done got into. He was trying with everything he had, but he just wasn't ready. And he wasn't prepared. Again, much like myself. In many, many, many times in my life. And the last thing this bird wanted was any help from me. Because every time I'd get over or close to him, he, he, you know, if he could have swatted at me, he would have. But he just sat there and just, you know, <laughs> try to run me off. And it got me to think that sometimes that's kind of that's how we are. That's kind of how we are. The last thing that we want to do is to talk about this spot that we done got ourselves into. And we try, to, we try to say, why did God put me in this position? Why did God put me in this spot that I find myself in? And in reality, we probably wouldn't even be here if we had just listened to him in the first place. I won't say probably. I'll say most of the time, we wouldn't even be here if we'd have listened to what he was laying on our heart to start with. And... Uh, I'm glad it ain't just me. I'm glad a bunch of y'all shook your head. And, uh, <laughs> but sometimes we sit there in our little self-made spots because we didn't want to get real with God at some point. And this ain't no secret. Most of y'all already know this, but I tell it for any of y'all that, that don't know it. He already knows all about that spot you in. You ain't hiding nothing from him. Like I say, you can lie to me and you can lie to you, but you can't lie to God. He knows all about that spot. He knows why you there, how long you've been there. And more importantly, he knows how long you're going to stay there. I didn't really know what to do with this little, this little bird. I'm like, man, what do, I, what do I do with this guy? So finally, I said, all right, I'm going to go pick him up and see how this works. And uh, so I reached down, and I picked him up. And, I mean, he was one of these little, I just, he just hold him in one hand. And I was really wondering how bad this was fixing to hurt because I knew he was probably going to just peck the fire out of my hand. I said, well, I'm going to give it a shot anyway. So I picked him up. And I was thinking about, I was thinking about me, but we in a class, so I'm going to say us. How we find ourselves in a bad spot with no help around, no help in sight, except for one. The one. There ain't but one, one person going to get us out of this, and that's God. And I reached down and I picked this little bird up. And surprising to me, that little fella, he didn't bat an eye. He just sat there, just looked around. And I got to thinking, whenever we're like this, and we quit fighting what's going on. We quit fighting against God. And we quit trying to fix all the things ourselves. And we let God just put his little loving arms around us and go put us on the right path how calm all these things in our life get how all this stuff that we thought was just jacked up in our life everything even if it hadn't changed we get that peace about it we get a peace and it ain't, it ain't a peace I can tell nobody about. It ain't a peace I can describe to nobody. But you need to tell somebody, you need to get some of this right here. You need some of this peace. I walked around the corner, and there was another one of these little birds. Man, I told you there was three of them. The other one was on the windowsill. And uh, as soon as I walked around the corner, that juggler was, he was gone. Right up to the tops of the trees. 
And I looked around, and the third bird that was in the nest, he wasn't, he wasn't nowhere to be found. He, he was gone. Uh, and I told that little bird in my hand, I was like, well, it kind of looked like everybody got this thing figured out except for you. And I thought, like when we started a lot of little lesson, it seemed like everybody else had this thing figured out except for us. So I set the little bird down over in the bushes, and I went back a little bit later, and he was gone. I figured, I figured well, he, 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 he got this thing figured out. And I kept thinking about us and how sometimes all we need to do is just sit still a look for a minute. And we need to quit banging our heads against the wall, against the door, and let God just wrap his arms around us for a minute. Wrap his arms around us. Let us cool off for a minute. Let God put us on the right path and breathe for a minute. Sometimes, you know, you just got to take a deep breath for a minute. And God will give us that deep breath. God will let us slow down and quit running around in circles all the time, and he'll let us breathe. And when we breathe, we get that peace. Over in Proverbs 3 and 5. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. We've all heard this a hundred times, but... It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lead not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. I got a, a t-shirt I get a lot of comments on, and it's got, up here on the top, it says, I got this. And it's signed God. And then it's got Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 on it. He's got this. If we'll let him got this, if we'll get out of the way and quit trying to fix all this ourselves, he's got this. One last scripture, a couple pages back, Psalms 34. Psalms 34 and 17. It says, the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of broken heart, and say that such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. That verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the, the Lord delivered them out of them all. The righteous are going to have issues and problems in their life. It's going to happen. Ain't nowhere in here tells you anything different. These things are going to happen. You can turn on the TV and you can find someone that's going to tell you that it's God's will for you to live a life of luxury and wealth. I promise you, you can turn it on right now. And all you got to do is just to speak it into existence. And then send a check to P.O. Box, whatever. Or the way to end all your problems is on this CD. And you're in luck because it's on sale. But that's not what God's Word tells us. And I thought about this. Jesus Christ came to earth and he handpicked 12 men. Off of all the dudes on this earth, he picked 12 of them. And while he was here, they were his closest friends here on earth. They his buddies. You know, that's his guys. How cool would it be to say, I was best buddies with the Messiah. The mortal son of God down here on earth. How many of those guys lived a life of luxury and wealth? Now one of them. 
Most of them got hunted down like criminals and killed in some really horrible ways. God's word doesn't promise us those things, but it promises us God's love and guidance in our troubles. God's love and guidance. That's what that, that, that's if we wake up every morning and we don't get but two things, God's love and guidance ought to be at the top of the list. We have a lot of people on our prayer list here at our church, and we all have our, our personal little prayer list of people that we want to pray for. But if you look at a lot of them people, they got a smile on their face. And it's not because they're really happy or excited about the situation that they've, they've fallen in, but it's because they're excited about God's leading them through whatever they're going through. But in order to get there, we have to turn away from trying to fix all these problems ourselves and turn them over to God. Turn your life over to him. Turn your problems over to him. And then you can be like that little bird, if you want to, sitting in the heat with your mouth wide open trying to scare everybody away from your problems. Or you can turn it over to God and you can let him put his arms around you. And get you out of the heat for a minute, let you breathe, let you cool off for a minute. And then put you on the right path that you got yourself off of because we didn't listen to him to start with. I pray that we all do a little better, mainly myself, do a little better at turning these issues that come up in my life over to God. And not turn them over to God as a last resort. I done tried it 14 different ways. So I guess I'll let God handle it now. Well that ain't what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to say Lord I. I woke up this morning. Found, me, found myself somewhere. And uh, I ain't real sure about where I need to turn. But I know turning to you is the first step I need to do. We all can get better at that. Every one of us. If y'all will please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much that you will put your arms around us. Let us calm down and cool off for a minute and give us that peace that can only come from you. And Lord, we, we're, we're confident in the fact that you will help us to get back on the, on the right track and, and, and end up where we need to be. Lord, we thank you for the, the scripture. We thank you for the, uh, your word that we get to read from and more importantly learn from every day. Lord, we thank you for this class. Lord, we ask you to be with the pastor here in the next hour as he, as he brings your message to us. Lord, help us to, to take it in, study on it, and apply it to our life. Lord, we ask of all of this in your precious and holy Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen.